This section of Fashioning the Body illustrates the changing silhouette of the fashionable female form beginning in 1700. Each mannequin represents the feminine ideal of their time period. Specific silhouettes that are achieved with the aid of the understructures shown throughout this exhibition. Corsets, girdles, and bras do not conform to the body. The body must conform to these structures. Changing a woman's proportions and posture by thrusting the shoulders, bust, and hips in different, sometimes opposing directions. Women's bodies did not suddenly change from the hourglass silhouette of the 1800s to the slender androgynous look of the 1920s. Women's bodies stayed the same. It was the change in fashion and corresponding undergarments that would create the new silhouette. As you look at each mannequin, imagine the understructures that were worn and how these devices molded the body by cinching or flattening certain areas and how this pressure distributed the flesh and changed the wearer's posture. For example, in the late 19th century, lacing a corset tighter at the waist redistributed the body's fullness to the hips or bust, and the elongated silhouette of the 1920s was achieved by flattening the bust and wearing a long girdle that de-emphasized the waist and slimmed the hips. Besides physically transforming the body, Understructures can visually change a silhouette as well. The large volume of the cage crinoline of the mid-1860s made the waist appear smaller by contrast, and wearing a bustle from the 1880s created the S-shaped silhouette by adding extra volume to the back and emphasizing the posterior, while also creating a flat front. From the upright, stiff torso of the 1700s to the soft shoulders and sloping back of the 1950s, Diet and exercise contributed to achieving the ideal form. But today, body modifications and cosmetic surgery may replace the need for understructures to shape the fashionable body.